Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Bruce Pardo, who is otherwise known as the flamethrower Santa? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the crime and offer my analysis. Bruce Pardo grew up in California. He graduated from high school in Los Angeles before going on to college. He had both a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in electrical engineering. Bruce worked at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Los Angeles County from 1985 to 1994. He had other jobs as a software engineer and electrical engineer. At some time around 1999, Bruce and his girlfriend had a son. The son was severely brain damaged in a swimming pool accident. Bruce was the only one home at the time, but he was not suspected of any type of criminal activity in connection with the injury. Bruce left his girlfriend. He did not pay any child or spousal support, even though his son had a lot of needs in terms of medical care. In 2004, Bruce met a woman named Sylvia. She had three children from two prior relationships. Apparently, Bruce did not tell Sylvia about his son. Bruce and Sylvia would marry on January 29, 2006. The couple ran into some difficulties in their relationship. Sylvia wanted Bruce to open a joint bank account, but he refused to do so. He envisioned their finances as separate. He thought that Sylvia would pay all of her own bills, including the costs of raising her three children. In addition to this, Sylvia found out about Bruce's son. She was concerned because Bruce was claiming his son as a dependent on his taxes, even though he didn't do anything to care for him. By December of 2007, Sylvia was sleeping in a separate bedroom. She asked for a divorce in February of 2008. In June of 2008, Bruce was ordered to pay $1,785 a month in spousal support. Bruce lost his job not long after this. Evidently, he had defrauded his employer by submitting falsified hours. The spousal support was discontinued because of his termination. On December 18, the divorce settlement became final. Bruce was ordered to pay Sylvia $10,000, return a diamond ring to her, and give her custody of their dog. After this, no more spousal support would be required. Bruce claimed that he did not have $10,000. This takes us to December 24, 2008, six days after the divorce settlement. 45-year-old Bruce Pardo dressed up in a Santa Claus suit and made his way to the residence of his former in-laws, which was in Covina, California. Bruce was carrying a gift wrap package that contained a makeshift weapon, which Bruce had designed and constructed himself. The device featured an air compressor attached to a tank of high-octane racing fuel. It was designed to spray the fuel in order to facilitate arson. Bruce was also carrying several 9mm semi-automatic pistols. Bruce arrived at the house at about 11.30 p.m. About 25 to 30 people were gathered at the house for a Christmas party. Several of them were playing a game of Texas Hold'em, which is a type of poker game. Others were playing video games. Sylvia's eight-year-old niece, Katrina, opened the door. Bruce retrieved one of his pistols and shot her in the face as she was running toward him, shouting something to the effect of Santa Claus, Santa Claus, or it's Santa, it's Santa. Bruce then opened fire on other people at the party. After killing and injuring several people, Bruce unwrapped his makeshift flamethrower and started spraying fuel all over the house. He set the house on fire. It would take 80 firefighters about two hours to extinguish the fire. Bruce killed Sylvia, her parents, her two brothers and their wives, her sister, and her nephew. Three died from gunshot wounds alone, two died from fire alone, and four died from a combination of gunshots and fire. Three people were injured. Sylvia's eight-year-old niece, Katrina, survived the gunshot wound. The bullet had struck her alongside her jaw. Bruce was also injured. 
he had sustained third-degree burns on his arms and hands from the fire that he started. Bruce left the scene of the murders after setting the fire. He changed out of his Santa suit into regular clothes, but some of the suit had melted to his legs and feet. Bruce drove a rented 2008 Dodge Caliber about 30 miles to his brother's residence in Silmar, California. The home was unoccupied at the time. Bruce brought an end to his own life using a firearm. He was found at 3.30 a.m. on a couch inside his brother's residence. Bruce had parked the rented Dodge one block from his brother's house. He placed an explosive in the vehicle and set it to detonate when it was moved. Presumably, this was designed to injure or kill first responders. The vehicle also contained 300 rounds of ammunition, a pipe bomb, and black powder. Fortunately, the police realized the vehicle wasn't safe and called the bomb disposal unit. The bomb squad detonated the explosive and the vehicle caught fire. No one was injured, but the vehicle's condition significantly deteriorated. This was the only time a Dodge Caliber could be considered a hot car. It wouldn't surprise me if the vehicle rental company tried to sell this vehicle like it was no big deal, like no one would notice the damage. They just changed the color from blue to charcoal gray and driven by a non-smoker to driven by a smoker. Now moving to my analysis. The case of Bruce Pardo is highly unusual for a number of reasons. I will go through various aspects of this case that stood out for me. Item number one is Bruce's personality. There's not much information available in this area. He was described as quiet, a friendly loner, and highly intelligent. Interestingly, some people described him as very friendly and outgoing. He volunteered as an usher at a Catholic church near his home. One person described Bruce as an adequate tipper. How seriously must somebody take tipping to think of it when describing a killer? Is that really important information when trying to figure out a killer's personality? You never hear a police detective discussing a murder suspect by saying something like, I'm not interested in what his mood is. I don't care if he is dangerous. What I need to know is this. Would you classify his tipping activity as satisfactory? Bruce was able to disguise his mood fairly well. Just two hours before the murders, one of his neighbors saw him. Bruce said, Merry Christmas. The neighbor said Bruce seemed normal. Moving to item number two. Bruce's motive appeared to be his divorce from Sylvia and the financial stressors brought on by that divorce. When the couple was married, their combined income was $153,000 per year. Bruce earned $122,000, whereas Sylvia earned $31,000. Their monthly expenses were $8,900, $2,700 just for the mortgage. Bruce had managed to save $88,500 throughout his life. This evaporated quickly during the divorce. Bruce was confused about his initial spousal support obligations. The couple had only been married for a short time, and Sylvia was spending a lot of money unnecessarily. For example, she took trips to Las Vegas to gamble. She bought a BMW. She ate at the nicest restaurants, would frequently get massages, and even took golf lessons. She didn't have any rent or mortgage after the divorce because she lived with her parents. Her behavior seemed inconsistent with somebody struggling financially, and her lifestyle was extravagant compared to Bruce's. Item number three is the nature of a breaking point. Sometimes when the pressure on a person builds to a high level, they simply can't handle it. Even though this crime was premeditated, it seems like it was based on Bruce hitting a breaking point. He was financially devastated. He had saved money for a long time. He probably had a vision in his mind of what life would be like. The divorce changed everything. In addition, he even lost his dog, which probably only punctuated his isolation. I think loneliness may have been a major contributor to his motive. It wasn't just not having money. It was being rejected. He was alone. Item number four is the extent of Bruce's rage. Bruce wanted everyone to suffer. He wasn't only interested in killing Sylvia. He wanted her entire family to pay. Bruce's mother was invited to that same Christmas party. It was his intent to murder her as well. As it turns out, she became ill 
and miss the party. In addition to Sylvia's family and his own mother, Bruce intended to kill Sylvia's divorce attorney. Another rental vehicle, a gray 1999 Toyota RAV4, was later found in Glendale, right near the end of the driveway of a residence owned by Sylvia's attorney. In the vehicle was a gas can, food, water, two computers, and a map of Mexico. Item number five is Bruce's escape plan. Most killers like this don't really have an escape plan. They intend to die in the attack or shortly afterward. Retirement planning is a low priority for these types of killers. There's quite a bit of evidence supporting the idea that Bruce planned on escaping. He had purchased the Santa suit as a disguise. He built his own gasoline sprayer to destroy the evidence. He drove away from the neighborhood in a rental vehicle with the lights off. He had another rental vehicle ready to go near the residence of another intended victim. He had $17,000 in cash and an airline ticket stuck to his legs with cellophane. I think that Bruce was leaving his options open. It seems clear that the RAV4 was his escape vehicle, but I don't know if he had already determined his destination. I think he wanted to see how quickly he was named as a suspect before deciding how desperately he should act in his escape. What Bruce didn't count on was a source of ignition in the house. As he was spraying the fuel, something ignited it, and he was severely burned. Knowing that escape was impossible in that state, and being in a tremendous amount of pain, he decided to make his exit. Now moving to my final thoughts. There are some people who are sympathetic to Bruce's circumstances. They can understand why he became so angry about the spousal support. Perhaps Bruce did get a raw deal financially, but that's no excuse to commit murder. To say he overreacted is an understatement. One of the most enduring images of this case was Bruce dressed up as Santa Claus and carrying a homemade flamethrower. Other than disguising his identity and destroying evidence, perhaps Bruce was trying to create a metaphor, like he was trying to show his victims and the world that he was a good person pushed to take a bad action. He took on the identity of Santa Claus to demonstrate the good side and carried the homemade flamethrower to demonstrate the bad side. There was a time when Santa Claus would leave a lump of coal upon being upset with somebody. In Bruce's mind, Santa Claus simply didn't carry enough fuel. Bruce took that to an extreme. Those are my thoughts on the case of Bruce Pardo. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.